Nowadays, you have really good editors for the JV1080, some freeware editors from the controller platform, uh, and of course, also the coffee shop editors. And I can really recommend the coffee shop editors because they are simply brilliant at file management. The way you can organize, structure your patches, send them to the synth, save them to your computer is just worked out so well. So let's dive into the structure of the synth. And I will show you that it's really easy to create amazing sounds from scratch. The synth basically allows you to create uh, four different layers of sound uh, and blend these all together. Um, yeah, and on the front panel, you can turn these on individually with the tone switches. Uh, so if this is our patch, This is our full patch, and if I would turn off three voices and have one remaining, it would sound like this. All you hear is some sort of like sp spacey rumble in the background, uh, which is more like a texture uh, that supports the sound. Uh, the second layer, when we add this, It's, it's adding this string type of sound to it. And if we add the third, it's actually adding a deeper, lower octave layer, kind of an organ, organic organ kind of sound. And the fourth layer is really soft. It's almost not noticeable, but Yes, yeah, some sort of like similar sound as sound three, but I think it's just pitched down a little bit. So yeah, basically these um, these four layers combined make up the entire preset. Um, yeah, and if you want, you can of course edit the sounds from the interface, uh, which is a little bit of a hassle. It's doable, but I prefer, in all honesty, to use the, um, the coffee shop editor for this. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But I will show you a bit what, uh, what you can do from the interface and uh, explain the basics. So if you were to edit tone one, you would have to select tone one here, tone select. But if you want to edit all four voices parameters, you can select them all at the same time. So what you have to do is just press all the tones at the same time. So if you were to do it like with two tones, you just press two or the other two. But in this case, I want to edit a parameter from all four tones. Let's say we want to change the waveform to create a slightly different sound. I've now selected the tone one, two, four, and I go to the parameter page and I select the wave page. So here you can see tone, uh, it's like, like uh, um, this is more like the palette of all the sounds. So tone one, tone two, tone three and four. So when I want to change the tones, I use the value encoder and you see that all the numbers of the waveforms are changing. So this is our original patch. Actually, it's already changed, but it doesn't matter just to demonstrate you how quickly you can kind of change the character by just browsing through all the waveforms that are uh, the, the JV comes with. That's Fateless. Hello, Fateless. So yeah, we already have quite a different sound here. Um, what what this does is just changing the waveform so that all the original uh, values of the envelopes are still the same. So let's say we want to change uh, something of the, the filter envelope or the volume envelope, then we can do, go to the parameter TVA page, which is the last one. And you can just 
basically browse with the up and down pads here to different parameters. So the envelopes are also consisting of levels and not only uh, ADSR. So uh, you have also the level setting, which was also the case on uh, the JD800. So it's more like a semi-complex uh, envelope creator. So this is the time two, and time one is basically the attack. So if we turn it all the way down for all the waveforms and all the layers, you lose the attacks that we already had in the patch. So if I increase, it's gliding. So yeah. And if I were to only change this for one particular tone, I just deselect the parameter page and go back to the tone select and then change it only for tone one. So the time goes to zero. And there we go to tone two. Change the time also. And here you get this attack back. <coughs> <coughs> So yeah, this is uh, a bit of a demonstration on how you can uh, can kind of edit the sounds from uh, from the front panel. It's not that difficult, but it's a bit of a, a hassle if you want to create multiple presets. Um, so yeah, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna dive into the coffee shop editor. So as you can see, it it really is quite a visual interface. Um, we basically start at the, at the top on the right side where you see the tones and uh, basically where's a cross here, you have a selected voice and oscillator. So like on the interface, uh, you have the tone switches where you can mute and unmute the sounds. This is, this is a similar thing. Um, you can select the individual voices with all the parameters. So when I press one, I'm only editing the first oscillator and you see literally all, all the information. And here it looks really overwhelming, but it's quite, quite simple really. This is just um, the pitch envelope and uh, the tuning section. Uh, this is the filter section and the filter envelope below. So you have the level and uh, the parameter, of course. Uh, then um, there's the amp envelope page. And uh, when we go over here in the left top, we can select also our waveforms. And then you can also select waveforms from possible expansions. So uh, if you have any expansion units inside, these are already mapped. But in this case, we're only using the internal waveforms, even though I have the vintage expansion, but I have put it in my JD990. So this is the LFO section. Each voice, each oscillator has its own LFOs um, that you can edit. And then there's, um, let me see, where is it? Also a frequency modulation section, which is kind of an FME type of simple character. So if you turn that on over here, you can determine the amount, the color, and the depth, which changes your sound. So uh, if I turn on voice two only, and you see if I if I just uh, deselect the tone, it also becomes blurry over here. So let's go to voice one and two. Yeah, voice two. So just to. Uh, to kind of demonstrate how it works here. Um, if I were to, uh, let me see. If I were to make like an, uh, a filter attack envelope, I would have to increase this one over here, T1, in the, the filter envelope section. Um, 
yeah, and of course also uh, there are different filter modes that you can use, which is really cool because some voices you can use like uh, low pass, others band pass, others high pass, and, and and that all combined, you know, you can really glue kind of kind of shape a sound with that. Uh, it's quite quite interesting when uh, when all these voices start to come together and move. So let's say we do choose a band pass filter for this sound. And increase the resonance a bit. It's quite loud. But you hear also the character of the filter now, clearly. And we can apply an LFO. So basically, if you select LFO 1 here and you increase the amount. And if we increase the LFO rate over here, you hear it's manipulating the filter. And you can select different waveforms for the LFO, so you get like different movements. For example, the random wave. So it quickly sounds really organic. So let's add tone 1 back. Um, And let's choose a band pass filter for that too. It's more like a texture in the back. <clears throat> I'd say we add tone 3 and we go to page 3. If we were to change the waveform, you can just select it over here and then uh, choose one of the uh, the waveforms, it's really uh, well explained what type of waveforms uh, there are. So let's say we choose a bell wave sound. So a good section to uh, a good section to really shape your sound, if you uh, have chosen many waveforms on all the oscillators, is the amp page over here. Um, this is where you can determine all the levels. So if we uh, just turn these down on uh, oscillator 1 and 2 and just listen to 3. And we blend in oscillator 2 and oscillator 1. Mm, let's say we want some filter movements on oscillator 3 as well, a little bit more. Maybe also set the LFO to random. That's pretty dope. But let's turn the volume of oscillator 2 a little bit down. Well, uh, let's go over to our fourth tone. So I just uh, want to add a fourth tone, and let's listen to the fourth tone only. Page four, tone four. Just a bit of filter. A slightly thin tone, but maybe it blends well with the rest.
So to top it off, you can also um, add uh, panning to uh, to the sounds, the individual sounds, and you can also add a randomized panning for uh, a bit more of like a probability and predictable width of the sound, which is quite nice. You know, it's uh, it's really subtle, but um, yeah, it can add a lot of like little randomness something you don't always particularly hear but <clears throat> it all adds up to the sounds really um yeah and also on the panning page you can select uh, the frequency modulation whether you want to apply it or not and it's really changing the sound pretty radical so if i turn it on all the sounds and increase the depth here yeah, also color levels so as you can hear this is quite quite nice if you want to do like more droney glitchy type of sounds you can use this it's uh, I use it gentle sometimes just to change and manipulate the character of, uh, of a voice a little bit um, also per voice you can uh, can select the the effects that you want to apply and basically there are two effects uh, and that's a chorus and a reverb um, and uh, this is um, possible to also um, edit these settings on the comment page and in the bottom you have the basic chorus and reverb settings um, so the course is obviously nice to create more width. And if we raise the feedback level, you hear it's changing the character overall a lot. Um, but you can determine the amount on uh, on the pen and out page. So if I don't want any chorus at all on voice one and two, for example, I just turn it down over here or the reverb setting. The reverb is not really present. It's not super heavy or something, but you can give the sounds a bit more space and a bit more life with it. I use it not so extreme, but... So, as you can hear now, there's no chorus applied. We increase it per voice. Increase the reverb. So let's say we want more reverb. You can determine the level, the time, and also select a different algorithm. There's also a panning delay, which is nice. It, it kind of spreads the voice. And you can change the time in real. The, the, the time, you can change it. It's more like a dubby delay or something. Gives a pretty nice and spacey feel to the sound. Makes it really dreamy. It's quite useful actually. It's not bad. Um, so yeah, this is uh, in a nutshell a bit uh, what I what I do and how I use the JVs. And. Um, yeah, we can initialize a patch from scratch, of course. Um, but uh, maybe it was good to already explain it based on an existing patch. Uh, so on the right side, you also have in the editor, of course, you have the, the patches and the banks. So you can save individual patches uh, in folders. You can create different folders. So if I want to make a folder, I say show in folder. Uh, now I do plus here and then we have a new folder so let's say if I want to save this patch I can just uh, let me see save to synth send to synth randomize initialize uh, how do I save it send to synth randomize uh, yeah it's this one over here sorry 
So if you want to save the patch, you go to this disk on the bottom and you press it and it transfers it to the computer. And you can right click, show and finder. And this is basically the, the destination where it's all stored. So there you can put also all your presets that you downloaded, bought, or and the same goes for the banks. You can add entire banks to the coffee shop editor folders and the, the, the editor really just reads out all the presets in the bank. It's so convenient. So for example, this is my preset library and 2020 interstellar sunset. So if I were to load one of these sounds, I just double click it and it will basically load the sound. Um, yeah. So it's uh, it's quite a nice editor. Gives you a, a good overview of the synth, and um, yeah, obviously you have to be inspired to to make your own sounds and, and and really dive into it. But I like the fact that you can control a couple of things from the from the interface and also do many things from the from the pages. And I really. Yeah, so often if I have made a patch and uh, want to make a variation or something, I um, I would just go to the interface. I would just go and select all the tones again. Uh, go to the parameter page and then the wave page. And uh, I would just start skipping through the waveforms again. And basically what it's doing, it's just doing one step forward or backward on every waveform. So it's not like resetting uh, the waveforms uh, to all the similar waveforms numbers. So it's really more like a random kind of tool or, or you can do have lucky shots, you know, if you just skip and browse. And let's listen what it sounds like. Gonna just turn down the chorus feedback a little bit. Also, the delay feedback, I turn it down a little bit. Perhaps change it to a hull. Set the damping on a certain frequency. Oh, let's browse again. This is a nice, noisy, trippy, spacey kind of sound. So what if I'm not satisfied with one of the sounds of wavefor or waveforms? I can just get out of the parameter page and then select the tone individually again on the palette page. But this organ type of sound I don't really like. So let's skip that and choose something else. More like a voice type of sound. Um, yeah, let's turn down the noise sound a bit. Well, not bad. So yeah, it's just to, uh, to kind of demonstrate you to you how uh, how quick you can get really satisfying results. Uh, there are of course many waveforms inside that that aren't that interesting. I think only the vintage synth expansion of all the expansions is the most interesting one. Uh, maybe the string expansion also. Uh, so yeah, those are really the ones to look after uh, if you want uh, want to get an expansion. 
Um, so yeah, uh, maybe it's interesting to play a couple of presets from uh, one of my sunsets just to give you a more impression of what what is capable of. So these are some sounds from the interstellar sound set. This actually sounds really, really warm. So it's a three oscillator patch. Tone two. It's really nice to hear how organic it sounds and how all these waveforms just meld together nicely. It's it's the thing with a lot of software um, plugins that uh, they're full of waveforms and all kinds of I don't know things and somehow the the blending never really pleases me. Uh, it's what I like a lot about the JVs, the blending of the the waveforms. It's just really well balanced. It just all the sounds really complement each other, so... And the JV actually sounds beautiful uh, with some quality effects on top. Let's say we use Supermassive, which is of course a bit of a cheat plugin when it comes to space, but yeah, let's give it a... let's give us a try. There you have it, 90s PCM synth technology combined with 2021 reverb DSP technology. Now let's add some uh, some quality reverb on top to give uh, this 90, 90s PCM character a bit of a 2021 DSP spacious modern character. Select the patch. It's quite extreme, but you get the idea. I mean, it just shows you that uh, the JVs are beautiful for ambient sounds. I mean, you could go to Omnisphere or something, and it, the, the the problem with Omnisphere is that all these uh, patches sound so pumped up and so overly stereo processed, and somehow it just never really sounds lush and as I want it to sound. Uh, maybe because uh, there's so much stuff in there. I also lose myself. What I like about the JV is is really that it's such a focused instrument. Um, it has its limitations, but that's also what what I need. You know, give me limitations, so I I will work with them and work around them. And yeah, I mean, there's also the conversion and the sound character of it. It's just lovely and lush.
and it, it sounds really pleasing to my ears. The problem I have also with Omnisphere is that it uh, it's sometimes really painful and harsh or something. Um, and yeah, I said I lose myself in the options. Uh, it does too much. Uh, the JVs just stand, are set are stand out for pets and, and belly organic sounds and sound track esque stuff. Um, if you like that uh, type of sound, of course. So yeah, this is a bit. Uh, I hope this tutorial is inspiring to you. Um, so this is the JV in a nutshell. And uh, a little bit explain, explaining about how I use it, uh, how I process it, of course. 